Welcome to part two of our conversation with Brian Messinger about uncovering the dead. Let's start on the train, because I, I do want to go back to the, the priest's house. I want to talk about your experience in that church rectory. I think those sure. two can almost tie together in somewhat. But I want to let's talk about the train. Let's talk about kind of almost inanimate objects. You know, a train being a very large inanimate object, yes. but still an object. Um, you know, there's no it, it doesn't have emotions. It doesn't have a memory. It's you know, it certainly emits energy and things of that nature by the fact of what it's doing. What are your thoughts on that? What with, with ghost trains, ghost, um, you know, ships, things of that nature, these large behemoth of objects that almost, you know, when you see them in real life, have a kind of a haunting quality to them because of what they're able to do. And, and then today we have all these, you know, abandoned rail lines and areas where, you know, mm-hmm. shipping doesn't happen anymore or, or shipwrecks, things of that nature. What are your thoughts on, on vehicles, objects, things like that still being seen? And w- what's your take on all of that? Well, you know, and science tells us that energy never ceases to exist. It merely changes shape and form. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that has a lot to do with it. I mean, there's... There, something energy made the train let's just use the train as example Mm -hmm. energy made it took energy to build it it used energy um to move it and when they dismantled it 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 took energy to take it apart um now i'm not saying the train has a life force or anything like that but there's something to the energy theory um, in in my mind Mm -hmm. and you stop and think about you know this the building we're investigating used to be um a hotel for the train coming through town and you know it's one of those things that maybe it just imprinted itself somehow on that building because so many people came off those trains and rode those trains to see the loved ones or whatever um maybe that energy is still floating around a little bit and, and or, or it's cutting that you know as i said before like kind of almost like a time loop mm-hmm. and every once in a while it just kind of pops up um and there's not to say that maybe there was another spirit there that was trying to talk to us maybe in their timeline and the train went by who knows Mm -hmm. you know um again i wish i had all the answers because boy i'd be wealthy but (laughs) sure i mean it's just all opinion and that's why i asked these i know nothing you're gonna say is oh wow now we now we have the answers thank you (laughs) that's that's it got it yes right there Um, but when when we ask it's just it's i like to hear everyone's perspective on all these things that's that's just kind of my take on it yeah Uh, you know it's it's one of those things that even with like the ships you know you stop and think about like you know these ghost ships that people see and all this, a traumatic event happened. Let's say a ship went down, you know, or it sank or caught fire or whatever the case may be. That's a pretty traumatic event. Um, and, and there can be a lot of energy imprinted into that object, even though it's sitting on the bottom of the ocean. Maybe now it's got so much energy imprinted onto it that it, it, it's going to be the flying Dutchman, as it were. Sure. Um, you know, the, it, who knows? You know, that's that's just kind of my theory on it. Mm-hmm. Um, again, not saying it's right or wrong, but that's just kind of my take on that. Do you consider yourself somewhat sensitive? Maybe a little. Mm-hmm. Um, I I get weird smells. I'll leave it, you know, <laughs> sure. um, of all the things in the world to get. I, I can walk into certain places and I, I get these overwhelming smells mm-hmm. that nobody else can get. And I'm, I'm finding that I'm pretty on target with them, especially when you start finding out the history of the building. Mm-hmm. And my, my friend Dana, who's a psychic on our team, has pretty much said that, hey, dum dum, you know, your grandmother had it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it it's inevitable that you're going to get some of it. Sure. Because my dad, I think my dad has a little bit of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, she said, this is kind of your waking up moment, as it were. So yeah. I don't, know, I don't know how to feel about that yet. Sure. But, I don't know why I got smells instead of seeing dead people, but <laughs> smells it is. So I, I ask because I, I I'm, I'm wanting your perspective on something that has to do with the objects and specifically like trains. I don't consider myself very sensitive. You know, there's mm-hmm. like a one to ten. I'm maybe like a two or a three. Um, you know, probably a little bit more aware than the the average person, but. Um, but you know not seeing or hearing dead people you know sure. by myself that others are not enough to be if i'm in an environment i can kind of feel if something is off or weird or different or whatnot and i always felt 
different on, uh, I used to, to hike an abandoned rail line. I grew up in okay. Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. Right, um, not too far. Yep. And, and there was a, a rail line there that now it's a, a fully paved walking path. When I was a kid, it was just, you know, it was paved or, or by four wheelers that would go down it or snowmobiles. Sure. Uh, so it, it could get grown over sometimes. But I loved walking down that rail line. And I don't know why, but I was always so drawn to it. And there was an energy to that place that I, I, when I look back on, I, I, I can feel it and I can think about, yeah, there was something about that. It wasn't just kind of, this is a neat trail, but there was something different about the feel of walking down that versus just going to, you know, a, a nature park somewhere and, sure. and, and doing the, the hiking around there. Do you agree? Do you feel the same when you're, you're going on something or, or walking down the remnants of an old um, uh, rail line or or being in uh, maybe an old structure that used to have a lot of energy and people in it m abandoned malls come to mind there's there's something where a lot of energy was expelled at one point in time you can still feel it versus a place that maybe didn't have a whole lot of energy going on at it yeah absolutely i mean several people on our team i think have some gifts uh, we have a couple of empathic type people on the team uh, a couple psychics mm -hmm. and yeah i would agree 100 percent. you know we i've walked into places and gettysburg is a great example mm -hmm. um we went to gettysburg as a team we do a yearly team trip we went two years ago to gettysburg and we didn't really do a lot of ghost hunting as per se it was more about the history of it mm -hmm. but um you know we we <laughs> dana and i got out of the car and i don't know if you're familiar with gettysburg but there's an area called little round top Okay. Pretty brutal battle took place there. And we stepped off of the pavement onto the grass and literally, I mean, she was like thrown back almost. Um, and I had this horrible smell of blood and just gunpowder type smells. Mm -hmm. um, very strong and almost to the point of making me nauseous. And Dana, the same thing. She was She had to get off the grass. She couldn't just stand on the grass. She was blown away by it. Um, and not knowing a lot of the history of what happened in the actual battle, uh, there happened to be a sign there that was talking about, this is basically where the Southern troops, a group of them were slaughtered by the North in that area. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you stop and think about what happened to Gettysburg, you yeah. know, it, the energy that's imprinted on that alone. Um, yeah, it was, it was one of those wow moments, you know, like you said, you, and then you go to other places and you like, oh, this is nice. It's, it's calm here. It's very calming. You know, there's nothing going on. Uh, we've been to houses where, you know, you walk in, you're like, Ooh, hair stands up right away. You know, and what's mm -hmm. going on here. Um, and you know, the, uh, the place in uh, whitewater I had mentioned with the, the train whistle is one of those places where every time we go there, we walk in and you just get this feeling of, wow, so there's just so much happened here. Yeah. You know, we've seen a pair of legs walk across the basement in that place. You know, yeah, just legs. You know, how to, just nothing but the you know, from the knee down. Yeah, um, and the same with the church that we used to investigate. You'd walk into that place and you just knew you weren't alone. Mm -hmm. You just had that feeling that you were not alone here. Yeah, um, you know, the church had a long history. It used to be a stables and a fighting ring, and it's you know, it's a massive barn. It's a, just a huge old barn. Yeah, so interesting. Yeah, go to other places and nothing. And let's talk about that church because I wanted to to hear more. Is this the same church where you were in the rectory and you yes. saw? Okay, so tell me more about this church, its history, and then what what attracted you to investigate it. So the church originally was built as a stables and a carriage house to store carriages by a very wealthy family in late eighteen hundreds, early nineteen hundreds, I believe it was. Um, and then the owner was really into boxing and I can't remember the boxer's name who fought there, but he sponsored him and he would train there. So he set up boxing rings and kind of turned it into a gym for a while. Um, then the building was bought by a local school district and they used to store buses in it mm -hmm. and they would drive the buses around. Actually one half of the structure is missing in the riding arena area, but they would park buses in there. Um, fast forward. Then the Episcopal church purchased the property and you know, built the, the the rectory and built, you know, the chapel and you know, there's like a, 
almost like a smaller chapel area, that type of thing. And they also had a thrift store in the back. That's how they make a little money to support the building. Sure. And we happened to get in there through a friend of mine uh, who's actually on the team. He knew the priest and his wife, Mm -hmm. uh, or pastor, I'm sorry, pastor and his wife. And they got us in there to investigate. She was telling us about the stuff that had happened there all the time. And we went in and did one night of investigating to start. Um, and had some cool stuff, you know, just a little, you could hear footsteps walking in the old hay loft, um, little light anomalies here and there. And some of the signs, uh, there's like shields for each of the uh, archangels and the different angels they have up. They have their like coat of arms, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, and every once in a while, we'd straighten them out and we'd come back and they'd be turned. Yeah. Which I always thought was kind of cool. So it, was, it just kind of became a game there. And we investigated probably a dozen times. And throughout the course of it, we discovered that there is a little girl that is, for lack of a better term, trapped there or in there. Um, and we found that out one night in the uh, thrift store. I asked if anybody wanted to talk to us. And four of us heard it clear as day, a little girl's voice saying, hello, I'm here. And seconds later, the bathroom light flipped on and the faucet went on. I was like, oh. All right. Who's in the bathroom? Wait, all four of us are here. So it's none of us. You know, one of those moments. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we've actually seen her face float through the air um, in the main entry area. Um, we're, you know, kind of the foyer entry. Uh, we watched her face float through there and we caught her on Facebook Live one time, uh, popping her head up through a window and looking at us, uh, which was very cool. Um, we also had seen her sitting in the smaller chapel, uh, put her hands up on the glass and peek her face up and over into the window and look at us. Uh, so, yeah, we've had some great interaction with her. We, you know, we've left her some toys and stuff, and the toys get moved around, according to the priest and his wife now, uh, and they've left them there for her, a doll and you know, a couple of those little things. Um, so, so, yeah, so, so what, um, let me ask this, because this is, this is interesting and in the, the perspective of, uh, of the pastor at this church, because th- this sounds like a very different type of church haunting than, you know, one that had been a church for, you know, a hundred years and it's old, mm-hmm. you know, members of the congregation, things of that nature. This building had been repurposed several times over. Um, yes. Number one, I guess the question would be, uh, how and, and and what does the pastor make of this concept of the spirit of a little girl haunting this church so so far to the point of saying let's put toys out and things of that nature because wouldn't the belief system be of of the pastor that when you die it's heaven or hell there shouldn't be a little girl spirit wandering around the church still how does he based on what the common belief is of of uh, many in 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 that faith would would believe uh for you know what happens when one dies so I, I think it's more his wife that embraces it, um, that, you know, there's there's this little girl there. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's just like, yeah, okay, she's here, but he wants to help her move along. And that's, you know, and I, I can respect that. Sure. Um, but to my knowledge, uh, to this date, that she doesn't want to move along. She kind of likes it there. She feels at peace um, there. Yeah. And, and the, the backtracking a little bit on the history of the church, the family that used to that built the barns, Again, and when they originally built all these, it was a very wealthy family. Um, their daughter drowned in a pool at the mansion mm. on the other side of town. I'm not saying it's her, but it, it sure. sure seems like a coincidence. Yeah, uh, I can see it being the kind of place where you know she'd be very happy being around horses and all that as a young lady or a young girl. Yeah. Um, so I'm guessing it's probably a very calming spot to her, and that's why she remains there. Sure. As for the large thing that came out of the floor and stood over me, I, I can't tell you what that's all about yeah. or why it's there. Uh, I do have a photograph of it's, I guess it would be called almost like a tunic or um, kind of like the, the purple, like an apron almost that the, the pastor wears. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a picture of that floating about eight foot in the air that we didn't even realize we captured just taking random pictures during the day floating in the back room in the rectory where I saw this shadow with what almost looks like the shadow in it, wearing it, floating in the air about eight foot up. 
what what sort of feeling did you get when you were in that space and you had that experience emotionally? Um, the the entire church itself is very pleasant, very calm. That particular room, um, it's an uneasy feeling for me. Mm-hmm. Um, most of my investigators that have been in there have said the same thing. It's it's just a it's not a good feeling in that room. Um, it used to be the caretaker of the properties, like almost like his little house. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a second floor there. He kind of lived in that area. Um, don't know his name. Don't know what he was about. You know, from way back when. Yeah. Uh, but it's just an uneasy feeling in that room. It's, it's almost like a. I don't want to call it a dark energy, but it, it's just it's unnerving a little bit to be in there. Do you suspect that at some point in time in history that? maybe not so good of things occurred in that area amongst the living yeah i'm there there's always that possibility um you know again i've I've, (laughs) generally my my opinion on people isn't so great as a fireman for 30 years (laughs) sure um yeah there's there's always a good chance uh that something dark and or not so good or nefarious happened in that room yeah the caretaker who knows um but that room in particular is a very uneasy feeling. Yeah. And I'm not saying it's necessarily tied to the church today or anything just because of all the things that have changed with that building and, and having been so many things. But how would you compare the feeling that you get uh, in that room to the feeling that you get at the house of the priest who allegedly abused children? Completely different area, completely different you know, church and everything um, like that. The, but The house of the neighbor of the priest actually is the neighbor Mm -hmm. um that is a very uneasy feeling in that whole house um from the upstairs to the first floor to the especially the basement the basement itself is just i don't i don't know anybody who's been in that basement who doesn't like it just you know the people that have worked there don't want to go in the basement um they always feel like they're being watched or it's just a very dark horrific feeling as that they've told me mm-hmm. they just don't like that basement of that place i would say that the the house that we've investigated with the basement where we got the hello i'm down here or i'm sorry help me i'm down here mm-hmm. um definitely a much darker feeling um compared to that church the rectory room yeah tell me about that building the the house that you investigated how did you come across that one and, and how did that investigation begin that was Actually, our very first investigation is a new team that we formed in 2014. Um, That was our very first one as a group. And it came across as I actually knew somebody who worked there. And she had mentioned it it was like a spa uh, type place at the time. Mm -hmm. And she had mentioned that, you know, things had flown off the shelves while they were, you know, she said she was a receptionist. She had mentioned that things have flown off the shelf and whatnot, and I had stopped in there one day just to talk to her a little bit about it, and the owner was there, and I said, you know, would you like us to investigate the building for you? She's like, yeah, sure, why not? Let's do it. What the heck? I said, okay, cool. Um, so we investigated, and that's how that came about. We investigated it, and in, in the one night, we probably got two really good pieces of video um, had several really good experiences and probably 14 or 15 different EVPs in one night. Um, on our video, we caught a, a carpet square on the steps, roll up and fly up and off the staircase, like little treads, little mm-hmm. covers. Um, you know, we went back and forth. There's no HVAC, no fans, nothing. Uh, we had something that seemed to be tapping one of the cameras, you know, would like vibrate. Mm-hmm. We'd ask it to stop, and it would stop, and then it would do it again. We'd like, please stop doing that. It would stop. Uh, had some weird light anomalies in one room upstairs, and then uh, we uh, personal experiences. We had a shadow come into a room close to us, and one of the investigators asked, "What are you?" And it, you know, bolted out of the room and it went past the the top of the stairwell. And the other investigators coming up the stairway saw it go by. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was it was moving pretty quick. You know, it was just a small black mass, about four or five foot tall. Um, yeah, and the EVPs, like I said, we got some children's voices. We got a it sounds like a toy piano being played. Yeah, um, almost like a little horn being played in the basement. It's almost like there were toys down there, which makes it even creepier. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and we put everything together, and you know, as a team, 
when we get all of our stuff together, we put it onto a jump drive and we present it to the, the client, mm-hmm. you know, so that they have a record of it and they can review it and whatever. And so we showed her everything and uh, she told us to never come back and that we caused all these problems. I'm like, uh, but you, okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah. It's like you called us, but yeah. whatever. Yeah. People are funny, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And since then she is, sold the business and I'm actually working with the new owner to try and get us back in there. Yeah. When, when you have something like that, when you're into a structure or building that had negative things, you know, in this case, allegedly occur and it, sometimes you can confirm, you know, occurrences and things of that nature, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and then you have negative energy and weird energy and things that just make you feel off. Do you think that that the actions of the living, the the heinous acts that some people performed, and we're talking here about abusing children, sure. do you think that that th- those acts, the fact that someone did that, it, it's not necessarily the the energy that's there. It's not necessarily the abuser that may be deceased and haunting the place. But do you think it almost kind of puts a stain on the environment and attracts negative? other energies and I, I, I you could go as far as to say you know demonic dark type things mm-hmm. um or you could say you know just you know shitty people that are spirits that are are out there lurking yeah. for for like-minded uh or or just kind of dark places because that's if they were that type of person in life they're probably still kind of drawn to darkness and death um does it yes. kind of become a a habitat for for negativity after that yeah, I mean, I, I've always said, you know, just again, as, as part of my career, that dirty attracts dirty. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I'm a firm believer now being in the, in the paranormal field for the better part of a decade, mm-hmm. that evil attracts evil, darkness attracts darkness. Yeah. And yeah, absolutely. I think for, you know, what potentially possibly happened there, I can't prove that, obviously. Yeah. Um, but if, if that's the kind of things that went on there, yeah, absolutely. I think it, it makes it almost like a little haven for other just darker crap if you want to put it that way yeah to hey this is a cool place to hang out because some real scumbags lived here um and unfortunately it it's it's stained like you said that environment it's stained the energy there it's, yeah it's trapped the residual and or with any luck just residual not the spirits of these children are not actually trapped there which would be horrific yeah um yeah, I think with, you know, that kind of trauma and stuff, yeah, it's it's going to make its mark. And that's just absolutely horrific to me, you know. Um, it, 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 the, to, to me, it feels like those sort of things stand out even more when they're that energy is in a location that otherwise should should certainly not have it, particularly like a church environment. There have been. I don't know if it's just, you know, the mindset of going into a church that's no longer a church, you know, that you can just see, you know, especially the older ones, how ornate some of them were and such. Mm -hmm. But there's some you walk into and you still feel kind of peaceful. And there's some you walk into and go, some dark shit went on here. Yes. Yes. Um, I I agree with you 100 percent. You know, and I go back to Gettysburg. We we walked into a there's a church there downtown in in the circle. Mm-hmm. Um, it was used as a battlefield hospital. Yeah. And when you walk in there, you just, it's like, wow, it's just overwhelming. You can feel the sorrow in there. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it hits you like a ton of bricks. And I don't think it matters who you are. You walk in there and you think about what happened there and it just, it pummels you. you yeah. Know? Um, and like you said, I've been to other churches. You walk in, you're like, this is a, just a very calming, yeah. peaceful, you know, serene, serene place. And yeah, you've walked in, you know, we've walked into other buildings and, like, hey, what the hell happened here? Yeah. You know? Um, so yeah, I think you're, you're spot on with that. Um, there's, there's one, long. there's one that comes to mind, um, up in, in Wisconsin, uh, in, uh, Berlin, Wisconsin, very close to where I grew up. It's a church or it was a church. It's now in, uh, like an antique type store. Um, okay. and it is, you know, I believe it was an older Catholic church. It, it still has, you know, all of the, you know, you walk in and it, it, you feels, you know, the ornateness of, of, you know, what those Catholic churches look like, you know, it, you know, from 1900 to, you know, 1980 something when they started to kind of, you know, consolidate and, and change up, but it's a very neat place to go into. And there's so many amazing things to see in that place, but, oh my God, there is a weird energy to that building. 
and many people oh, yeah. have, have said it and have even I've talked about it on the shows before. And I don't know what the history is. I don't know if anything happened there, but that's just the weird vibe that I've gotten. I've, are you familiar with the building I'm talking about? I, I've heard of it. Okay. Um, I can't think of the exact location, but yeah, yeah. Uh, my, my friend Dana has mentioned it. She's been from up that way. Yeah. Um, and she has mentioned it. And yeah, it's it's a place on the bucket list to visit. It's, yeah, it's um, worth checking out. Know. They're only open certain, they're at very, very odd hours. And I, I only visit Wisconsin rarely now, but I've, I've been in there, I think once or twice I've caught it luckily to go in. But it is, it it's one of the most interesting structures I think I've ever been in. And you go, even like the basement, and then it takes it to like where the, the Sunday school areas were. And all mm-hmm. of it just has such a weird energy to it. I, and I don't know, some of it could be psychological because you're, you're walking through the remnants of, you know, what was this active place. And many of us have memories of these places when they were active. So to see them in these different states is kind of strange. It almost kind of has that, you know, abandoned mall feel if you will yes but yes but there, there's something else I, I feel like going on there when you have a building like that that's been essentially stained or there's negative energy that seems to be lurking in it do you believe that those buildings can ever be cleansed of that energy or is it kind of a permanent spot on history and really the only thing that can be done is you know it's time to take this place down and and do something new you know, it it's one of those things that I don't know if you can ever get rid of that kind of dark energy. Things that have happened, um, like I said, I mean, that's one of those things. For it, it stains your soul, yeah, is the best way to put it. And you stop and think about, you know, not to use it as an example. Well, I guess as an example would be like Auschwitz. There's yeah. no way to ever cleanse that. Sure. Um, you know, there there's no way you could ever remove the horrific things yeah. and the sorrow from that build. But that, it's that the ulti- it's like okay. the ultimate example. Yeah. I mean it's like yes. you're never gonna I mean, yeah. You're not gonna put a mall you, there. Yeah, you, you put up a parking garage and I think you'd still have issues. Yes. Um, you know, it's it's one of those things that you can never clean. Uh you know, can you clean where the spa is maybe? I, I don't know. Um I I think the building's it's old. You know, it's it's hundred and fifty years old. I think that there's I think even if you put up a new house, you're still going to have some issues. Yeah, that's just my opinion. I don't think you can ever really truly cleanse any particular location of its full haunting. Mm-hmm. Um, I think maybe you might be able to put it at bay for a little bit. Yeah, but that's about it. Uh, I think if it wants to be there, it's going to be there. That's just my opinion. That wraps up part two of our conversation with Brian. A big thank you to him for joining us and sharing his experiences with us on the program. Until next time, for the Grave Talks, I'm Tony Bruschi. Thanks for listening.